In this lesson, I'm going to explain how to animate masks. We're going to use a mask to animate text onto the screen. We're also going to use a mask to follow motion inside a video clip, and we'll morph from one mask to another. To follow along, go to Working Files, open up After Effects Projects, and then open up 1004 Animate Morph. All right, we've got two comps here inside this project. The first one is this bicycles clip provided to us by Digital Juice from their stock footage library. And the second comp just has a red solid layer on it. We're gonna start with the bicycles. What I wanna do is animate some text onto the screen using a mask. So let's just add some text here. Go to the type tool, click on that, and add some text across the top here. Click there, I'm gonna go down to, let's say bicycling in the park. I'm going to press the Enter key on the numeric keypad and press the V key to get the selection tool on and maybe make it just a little bit more prominent there. There we go. That should work fine. We're going to wipe this on from left to right, kind of more or less matching the motion of the folks as they ride through the scene. All right. So to do that, we need to add a mask to the text layer. So the text layer is active. And let's check out the rectangle tool here. The rectangle tool is perfect for this kind of work. So I'm going to make a mask here right to the left of bicycling and all the way across. We don't need to use the layers panel for this because we're right here and we can see what we're doing pretty clearly here. So I got the rectangle tool selected and now we're just gonna drag across there, create that mask there. All right, that's our mask and now we wanna animate this mask on the screen so it reveals the text. So I'm gonna go down here to mask and open up the properties, there we go, and keyframe the mask path by turning on keyframes there and that has that first keyframe with it already wiped on which is exactly what we don't want to have but we can fix that in a moment. Right now we've got these big squares around here, meaning that if I grab these guys, it's gonna move the entire mask. I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna click away for a second. Just click on the layer name. And that changes the nature of those little points to ones that are not so big, which means we can work on them individually. Grab the selection tool. If I click on the segment here, I can move the entire segment, which is kind of convenient. I wanna keep it from going up or down like that. I hold on the shift key and that constrains the motion here to within that line. I'm gonna put it a little bit left like that and that'll be the starting point where our current time indicator is residing on top of that keyframe there. Let's go in a little ways where the folks are kind of into the scene like that. Now I can grab this thing again. Right now it's the same circumstances as before. I can just grab hold that line segment, move it to the right, hold on the shift key to get it to line up, and we'll take it all the way to the right like that. There you go. Pretty straightforward. Let's watch that thing wipe on the screen now. Here we go. We can take away the wire frame here so you can see it a little bit better. And that works pretty well. One thing is though, it's kind of a hard edge to it. See how it just slices things in two there? We can soften things up by using the feather property. So let's go down to masks, mask feather, and increase the feather and see how that kind of makes it go a little bit softer as it comes on. Let's see how that works now. And the thing about getting to the end here is that you wanna make sure that the path is far enough to the right that the letter K there in this particular case doesn't have a soft edge to it. That's good because the path is way off to the right there. You can see it there. It's far enough that we don't have a soft edge to the K there. That would have happened if we would not moved it far enough to the right. All right, that's how you can animate text onto the screen or anything else for that matter. Just text is kind of a convenient thing to animate on. Let me turn off the eyeball here for that and we'll close that down. I'll select the bicycles now so that that box is no longer showing. What I want to do now is create a mask and follow this boy, follow his motion. So I'll go back to the beginning here. And the mask will kind of conceal his identity for a while. He's in the witness protection program, folks, at least for a moment or two here. Then we're going to reverse that and have him highlighted, in fact. So to add a mask here that's going to follow his motion, the easiest way to do that is to do it on an adjustment layer rather than do it directly on this layer. So I'm going to right-click here and say New Adjustment Layer. There you go. And it goes to the top here, which is fine because we're not showing the bicycling in the park thing anymore, but we could knock it down a notch if we wanted to be really careful about it. This adjustment layer now will affect whatever's below it, which is the bicycles layer here. I'm gonna put a mask on the adjustment layer. So we'll go get the, let's say the ellipse tool this time. There we go. And now I'm gonna do it right here inside the comp panel rather than the layers panel, because I know pretty much where I wanna add it. I can adjust it on the fly here. So I'll click and drag. And I want to, let's say, click the control key to center it up and press the space bar to kind of align it. Again, we can adjust this later, but that'll do the trick. Let go, and there's our mask on the adjustment layer. Now, nothing disappeared. Usually when you work inside the layer like this, it makes everything else disappear. But because we're working the adjustment layer, we're not working on the bicycles layer, and the adjustment layer is already transparent. You know, nothing happens there as a result of doing this. That's kind of convenient. So what I want to do is I want the mask to follow the boy's motion. And just as we added keyframes when we wiped on the text, we'll do the same thing for the path here as well. 
open up the path, keyframe the path. That's a starting point. And this is going to be kind of a crude way to do things. You can always use the tracker to do this better, but this will work fine for this particular motion because it's such consistent, smooth motion here. So I'm going to go forward a bit. He's going to kind of go outside the frame there just a touch. So now I want to move this thing. And notice how the color changed. Over here, when it's on a keyframe, it's a brighter yellow. When it's off the keyframe, it's telling you that I'm not on a keyframe now anymore. It's kind of a little signal there. It's done on purpose. It's kind of a cool thing. I want to move it to the right, so I take my selection tool. I just double-click on it to put a bounding box around it, and I can drag it over to the right like that. I can expand it a bit by just dragging it up. Press the Shift key to constrain proportions and the Control key to keep it centered there. There you go. Let's move it a little farther forward. We'll do this a couple of times. If you did it a lot of times, it would be more accurate, but I don't want to take too much time with this. I'll double-click it again. Got the bounding box again. Adjust the corner again by holding down the Shift key after I move it and the Control key, and then we keep it centered there like that. And we'll go a little bit farther. Do a couple more of these guys just to make sure we got some semblance of a following mask here. There you go. Move that over. Make it a larger by zooming it up. Press the Shift key, the Control key, and there we go. And finally, we'll have him go off the screen here. We'll follow him all the way off like that. Double click on it again. Come all the way down like that. And maybe make it a larger while we're at it. And shift and control to keep it centered. There we go. So now we have this mask more or less following him. If we wanted to make this a little more exact, we'd add a few more keyframes. But I think you get the gist of how this works. So now what do we do? We can add an effect here. I'm going to add the mosaic effect. So you'll see how that works. Go to effects and presets. Type in MOS, there's mosaic. This is a preset though, so don't use that one. Go down here to stylize mosaic. Just drag it over to the adjustment layer like that. And right off the bat, you get that showing up. And make it more blocks, make it like 40 or 50, something like that. So it's a little bit finer looking than those big chunky blocks there. And now let's see if that follows the motion. I'll just drag this thing through here and I'll see how that does it. So we're concealing its identity essentially which works in this case reasonably well. And what you can do now, you can reverse that. You can invert the mask, and now we're going to conceal everybody else's identity. And we're going to do one more effect. Let's add a blur there. So add fast blur, fast blur. And we'll drop that on there too, right there. And we'll just blur it up a bit here. That kind of softens things a little bit. Now we want to soften the edge, of course. You know about doing that with the mask feather, like so. And maybe we can take away this little wireframe so you can see what's going on there. And we're probably going to drop the opacity just a little bit so it's not so blurry in the background. And he's just kind of highlighted. So that's a pretty cool thing. You can use then these masks to follow motion like that. And if you want to be more precise about it, you can add more keyframes. Or you can try to use the tracker to track the motion and then have a mask followed that way. But that is something we'll cover later in the course. Okay, let's do one more thing. We'll morph a couple of masks this guy back to the beginning here, and go to Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop, and if you went through the chapter on shapes, then you've seen this process in action. So I'm going to just keep it brief here. I've got this Illustrator file here that I opened up inside Photoshop, and I selected the fish, and then I went over to the Paths panel and turned that selection into a work path. Now I'm going to make that path active. Make sure it's active by clicking on it. Go Control or Command C to copy it. Go back to After Effects. And as long as this guy is active, all we need to do is make sure that layer is active. I go Control or Command V to paste, and there is our fish brought in as a mask. If I go over here and double click on it with the selection tool, pressing V to get the selection tool, double click on it, I can expand it a bit. So I'm going to start growing up like this. Press the Shift key to constrain it, and the Control key to keep it in the center. Control or Command. And there's our little fish there. Okay, great. Let's go back to Photoshop. And I'm going to switch to a different one here, this young boy. We're going to morph from the fish to the boy. Evolution in a half a second. I click this guy here, make it active. Go Control C or Command C. Go back to After Effects. Now I'm going to make sure this mask is keyframed by turning on keyframes there. So now this is keyframed there. And we're going to maybe move the keyframe in a little bit so the fish can sit there as a fish for a while. Bring the current time indicator in a few seconds like that with the path active like this. I go Control or Command V. We now paste the boy in just as a mask. Simple as that. Double click on him to get a bounding box on it. Maybe zoom out a bit by going Control or Command minus. Hold down the Shift key after I start moving this thing and the Control key or the Command key to center him up. And there is our boy. We'll get the full view here by going Shift forward slash. And now we can morph from one to the other. 
click away here, and off we morph. And if you remember from the shapes chapter, there's a way to keep it from folding in on itself like that, and that's using first vertex. And so I'm going to move my current time indicator right to that keyframe by clicking on the navigator over here on the left. Now we're right on top of that keyframe. I want to have this guy be our first vertex instead of this one up here. So to do that, I just marquee select it like so, and that makes it the only one that's selected out of the whole bunch there. You can see how they're all turned off except for that one. Right click on that vertex and go to mask and shape path, set first vertex. And now that is the first vertex. You can tell obviously, because it's got that double box there. Navigate to the other keyframe like so. So we're right on top of it, so we don't add a keyframe. And I figure we should probably have his finger here, or his hand here be the first vertex here. So they're both in basically the same general area, general side of the image. So I'm going to marquee select that little guy. Oops. Try that again. I'm going to marquee select it. Sometimes it's tricky to marquee select. There we go. Right click there. Go mask and shape paths at first vertex. All right. Let's see how they morph now. Ah, much, much better. It looks pretty good, in fact. So that's how you can morph from one mask to another and also how you can animate masks.